In early 2014, Dyson brought out kinetic cyclone technology, which was supposed to remove the need to maintain, i.e. replace or rinse, the pre- and post-motor filters on a vacuum. Up until then, all vacuums needed pre-motor filters to capture the smallest particles of dirt that made it through the cyclones, or old-fashioned bags. This video will explain why this kinetic technology is amazing and how it works, how cyclone technology works in general, and debunk some of the myths and propaganda surrounding kinetic technology. Air and dirt come into the main bin from the floor head or hose. The air is made to spin around the bin and exits through the shroud in the center. Because it spins fast, the larger particles are made to get effectively heavier by centrifugal force and essentially fling out to the inside edge of the bin, much like the wall of death fur ground ride. The air that goes through the shroud in the center is thus free of the larger particles and contains only small dust that didn't have enough mass to be spun out at this stage. The air containing these small dust particles passes through the shroud and then enters a second stage of cyclones. These are smaller and spin the air even faster. This increases the effective weight of even these tiny dust particles and crushes them outwards to the sides of the cyclone walls. They're dragged downwards in the flow and are flung out of the hole at the bottom. The rest of the now much cleaner air escapes up the centre of the cones and onto the pre-motor filter. The air by this stage, at least in good cyclonic technology that works well, has had most particles larger than about a micron, i.e. a thousand nanometers, filtered out leaving only the most ultra-fine dust and bacteria. Poro design bagless cleaners still contain a lot of dust and dirt by this stage. There's not much of it in good cyclonic cleaners, but enough will be left without a filter that it could eventually cause problems for the motor if it's allowed to get there. The pre-motor filter removes most particles greater than half a micron, i.e. 500 nanometers, leaving mainly the small biological stuff. The filters on Poro cleaners clog relatively quickly, and are thus more reliant on them to capture dirt, meaning they need to be cleaned much more frequently. The air then passes through the motor and to the post-motor filter. This is usually HEPA grade and captures 99.97% of remaining particles that are greater than 300 nanometers, as well as any carbon dust that brush-based motors can generate. It's what causes the black stains on post-motor filters. The key advantage of high-quality, well-designed cyclones over bag cleaners other than having a much lower carbon footprint and being more environmentally friendly technology, is that they don't clog up like bag pores and their filters, and thus don't either lose suction or require motor power to be increased to try and compensate for this blockage, and this can be clearly demonstrated in a lab. So how do the kinetic cyclones work? Essentially, everything works the same, except the cyclones have even narrower tips. This allows even higher spin speeds and centrifugal forces, meaning that at this stage, even smaller particles can be separated than before. They had to make the tips flexible and oscillate to achieve this, and prevent them from blocking up because the hole is so small, and this was a difficult engineering challenge to optimise the materials and behaviour to get this to work right. In fact, it turns out in these cyclones, particles so small can be removed that there's no need for a pre-motor filter at all. In other words, these cyclones remove particles down to about 500 nanometers and do exactly what the pre-motor filter does. These small particles end up in the bin rather than on a filter, so there's no filter to maintain anymore. You literally just empty the bin. It's absolutely amazing technology and a great feat of engineering to achieve such performance from a cyclone system. These cyclones have been rigorously tested and it's been shown that they can suck up 10 years of household fine dust without ever losing suction 10 years being the design lifetime of the motor and other components. So little of the most ultrafine dust gets through the filtration system in 10 years worth of use that even the post-motor filters never need to be rinsed. They just don't clog up. This has all been thoroughly demonstrated using rigorous industry standard testing. Others have noted this too, as you can see in these plots by both Dyson and CNET. CNET actually sucked up plaster dust, which is typically forbidden in traditional cyclones. They genuinely work exactly as stated, providing you ensure airflow isn't restricted by ensuring you empty the bin before it gets full and keeping the shroud clear. That's literally all you have to do, just empty the bin before it reaches the max fill line, and the shrouds on these machines self-clean. Unfortunately, there are a lot of myths about the effectiveness of this technology, and it all roots back to propaganda videos posted on YouTube that seemingly don't like the Dyson brand. In such videos, you can see broken kinetic models with motors and post-motor filters caked in dust, 
and they conclude that the technology doesn't work and deliberately instill the idea that kinetic technology is therefore unreliable. What these propagandists don't tell you, however, is precisely how the machines got like that in the first place and simply claim it just naturally happened through normal use. They also never once show how, by following the manufacturer's instructions, you can reproduce such a failure to prove it happens naturally and the technology is fundamentally flawed. This form of propaganda does a real disservice to both the manufacturer and to people on the internet. As mentioned, formal and rigorous testing, along with the huge data from global rollout, has shown this technology works flawlessly and exactly as claimed, providing the vacuum is used responsibly in the home, i.e. normally and as instructed. Vacuum technology has improved so much that the user now only has to simply empty the bin before the max fill line is reached, no other maintenance. As discussed in another video with a link in the description, if you overfill the bin, you can block the shroud, reduce an airflow, and stop the cyclones from working properly. Bagless cyclonic vacuums will only fail, as with any technology, if they're neglected and mistreated. All the broken cleaners that are in terribly dusty condition are almost certainly examples of abused machines whose owners simply didn't empty the bin. They likely filled it up and packed it completely to the top, allowing all the dirt to be dragged directly into the cyclone separation system which was prevented from working due to restricted airspeed and ended up flooding the motor and post-motor filters, causing complete failure, much like a bowel obstruction. So always be skeptical of what you see on YouTube because there's a lot of bad stuff on there. There are people eager to use neglect as an excuse to peddle misleading nonsense to try and smear a great technology they simply just don't like. And hallmarks of the effectiveness of this propaganda are to hear people worrying that the post-motor filter will clog, asking for it to be checked after bedroom user tests, and to see people psychologically more comfortable having access to filters so they can check themselves and clean them unnecessarily. Again, this technology absolutely works exactly as claimed, as long as the machine isn't neglected and abused. No maintenance should be necessary to keep the machine sucking as well after 10 years as it did on day one. This has been repeatedly experimentally verified. It's truly great technology. Interestingly, it does look as though newer versions of some kinetic cleaners have the bin's internal structure redesigned to prevent the shroud from blocking if the machine is neglected and overfilled to try and minimise any problems that come from abuse. So in summary, kinetic technology improved cyclonic filtration so much that it now does exactly the same job as a pre-motor filter and now the small dirt removed is put straight into the bin and there's nothing to wash. In fact, it's so efficient that so little ultrafine dust gets through to the post-motor filter that it never needs rinsing in the designed 10 years of lifetime. This has been proved in formal lab testing to industry standards. Propaganda on YouTube has spread the myth that this technology fails with normal use, so in doubt in many vacuum enthusiasts' minds. What's almost certain is that failed kinetic cleaners are a result of abuse and neglect, most likely from users simply not emptying the bin, causing the shroud to block and preventing the cyclones from working causing the machine to completely clog up with dust. This wouldn't happen under normal responsible use. This technology is a quantum leap in vacuum inconveniences, and I've never felt it's been given due credit. Hopefully this video has helped shed some light on the myths and help people appreciate why this is such great technology.